Hello there, my name is Polish Links, and with this call music, let's introduce the game called The Sad Story of Emmeline Burns. And that's interesting. Right, I think. All right, preferences and stuff. Okay, let's new game. New game. That's what we want. Let's check this. Oh, and already an achievement. Okay. Uh, can you? No, I can't come back. Okay. Well, I don't know what's written there. Something with the name. Okay. It's all Aunt Catherine's fault, of course. Most things are, according to Mum. Stealing Mum's favorite dress when they were both schoolgirls was bad enough, but stealing the name of her first and only daughter. Now that's a law not many of us can sing to within our lifetimes. Wow. My name was supposed to be Amelia. Mum has always loved the name Amelia, for I don't know why. She wanted to call me Amelia if I was a girl and Thomas if I was a boy, after her father. And then Aunt Catherine ruined everything. Aunt Catherine fell pregnant with her first child around the time my mom found out she was going to have me. Their due dates were also very similar, only a few weeks apart. For mom and Aunt Catherine have never been particularly close. They spent more time together during their twin pregnancies than they had done over the last decade. They attended the same hospital for their, their checkups and went to the same support group at the civic center. And their rocky relationship improved over complaints about bladder infections, morning sickness, and uncontrollable cravings for anchovies, mom, or smoked cheese, Aunt Catherine. And then Aunt Catherine stole my name. She is one year younger than my mom, but she always got things first. That's what mom told me. She was the first to have her period, to pierce her ears, and to have a serious boyfriend. Okay, she was the first to have a baby too. A baby girl. A girl called Amelia. Mom didn't know what to do, having her dream name stolen away from her so suddenly. She had half a mind to confront Aunt Catherine about it, but then in the end, she only just began to repair her relationship with her sister, and she didn't want to ruin it. But she was still annoyed. To be honest, I'm not surprised at some point. She still is. Mom could have called me Amelia anyway, but the name didn't feel special to her anymore. Not when Aunt Catherine had used it. In the end, after much deliberation, Mom decided to go with her second option. Thomas. What? Since... Oh, okay. I thought she actually used it. Since I was a girl, however, Thomas was out of the question. Was there a female variant of Thomas then? Thomasina? Thomasandria, Thomaseta, maybe not. There was Toma, however, Toma Andrews, and that's how I got my name. That might explain why I don't like it very much. My name isn't really mine, like clothes that are two sizes too big. It doesn't fit me properly. It never has done. That's because it was never intended for me. If I'd been called Amelia. Would my life be any different? Would it change who I am? Don't know, because I've never been an Amelia. I'm just Toma, the weird girl with the weird name. And my name isn't the only weird thing about me. Ever since I can remember, my mom has been obsessed with family history. She, say it's, she says it's like playing detective, peeking back into the past with only fragments of information trying to find the truth. Mom took me to the library with her when I was small, so she could keep a watchful eye over my little blonde head while she delved into the annals of our family's long-lost history. There, she would spend hours and hours searching through the online data databases and all archives on the hunt for articles about the Spencers, or the Kendalls, or the Lintons, or the Beckets, or the Bradfords. Fortunately, our family used to be pretty rich back in the day. Mom says it's a lot easier to research your family tree if you come from a wealthy background. I feel like 
doing that actually <laughs> now there are more records kept on the comings and goings of the rich and opposed to street beggars and paupers it's probably because of the money as soon as money is involved people will uh, will pay attention to you it was like that back in the 1700s okay and it's exactly the same now that actually looks like I, not one, never mind. I remember that the floor of the library was hard, covered in the dark green carpet that was uncomfortable and scratchy, and the walls were a dull grey, like the concrete blocks in a multi-story car park. Full mom got me a library card. I always got bored within the first half hour or so. There are only so many times you, are, you can reread volumes of goosebumps. Despite these inconveniences, however, I still found the stories mom would tell me about my long dead relatives interesting. The story sounded like they came from the pages of book, not real life, not history, my history. There were stories about my great great grandfather, Zachary Kendall, who used to be a priest, but was fired from his post after he physically assaulted a member of his congregation while drunk on Christmas day. Nice! <laughs> and that's... That's another proof that you can't always trust priests. <laughs> A bit. There were stories about my great great gra great 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 three three greats grandmother Mary Bell Spencer who ran away from home at the age of 10 to marry her middle-aged piano teacher Roger Beckett. Alright. You never know when the love strikes you, I guess. There were stories about my great, 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 great aunt, Rose Bradford, who was rumored to be a witch and claimed she could cure any age or illness with a spring of holy. That's awesome. I know why these stories my mom told me of unknown people from unfamiliar times always resonated with me. Maybe it was because they weren't fictional characters, all celebrities, but real people, my family. Part of me. I wouldn't be alive right now without Zachary Kendall, even if he did beat up a member of his congregation, and I wouldn't be alive without Marbell Spencer, even if she did have a thing for older men who could play a semi decent Fur Elise. In a way, I owe them. I owe them a lot. I suppose what they say is true, blood really is thicker than water. And speaking of blood, the local library wasn't the only place my mom's investigations led her. Oh no, that was just the tip of the iceberg. She used to take me to cemeteries a lot, not just a cemetery in here, Barrow Bay All Saints, but cemeteries all across Lincolnshire, and sometimes even further afield to Yorkshire or Leicester, <laughs> god damn it. Leicestershire. The thing about family history is, if you get obsessed with it like mom, birth certificates and death certificates stop being enough. You want to see real evidence of your ancestors' past lives for yourself. Hence the graveyards. Lots and lots of graveyards. Every weekend without fail my mom would take me on a trip to graveyard searching for ancestors. Sometimes we'd turn it into a game. We'd challenge one another to see who could find Rose Bradford's final resting place the quickest. The winner got to choose what we'd listen to in the car on the way home. Being my mom's daughter, I hated her tasty music. And I was desperate to beat her. I got quite good at finding graves, if I do say so myself. Even though I was around 7 or 8 and my legs weren't as long as my mom's, I was able to beat her 9 times out of 10. I used to think she was going easy on me. Now, I'm not sure. I just have a talent. I'm good at finding dead people. <laughs> that sounds terrible. Even if I have been dead for two centuries and all that's left behind are bones. Now, let me just get one thing straight. I'm not crazy. I don't think that people call out to me or anything. I've never seen a ghost before, excluding the ones in horror movies. I guess it's just... A coincidence. Or is it? But it's quite a strange coincidence. 
Whenever I went into the graveyard with my mom, I just knew where to look, almost instinctively. My feet just happened to lead me to a tombstone, and via some strange skill, I might have inherited from Rose Bradford, the self-proclaimed psychic, I was usually right. That might be why I'm so obsessed with cemeteries, even now. Just like some people prefer hot weather, others cold, I like graveyards. They remind me of my childhood, of fun time spent with my mom searching for my relatives. When I went out looking for graves with my mom, I was almost always right. Ever since I started attending St. Hughes College, however, I've only ever felt wrong. For I get good grades in most of my classes, I'm hopelessly lost when it comes to anything beyond it. I have hardly any friends, other than Hattie, and even she might turn against me if she knew how I felt about her. I'm nothing like Amelia Miller, who just so happens to be in the same form as me. She's always surrounded by people, they all love her. Would they love me if I'd been called Amelia instead? I don't know. But I do know, even though it's unfair and ridiculous and I don't dislike Amelia, I'm still jealous of her. Her parents are still together, and her dad has a good job, and she has nice skin and pretty blue eyes, and she's incredibly popular. But remember that popularity sometimes is not the most important thing. Might be popular, but might not have a great soul. I, on the other hand, am awkward and shy, and I can't hold a conversation with anybody other than Hetty. That might be another reason why I like graveyards. There are a lot of people in them but they can't bother me like they do in school. Fair that, and that's perfectly fine by me. <laughs> that really is not sounds good. Again, as the saying goes, dead men tell no tales. They only leave tales behind, which we can examine as we see fit. That's why I came to Barrowby All Saints this Friday. Instead of catching the bus to go to the school, I just want some time off. A few moments where I can stop being myself. A person I've never liked. If only I had been born as in Amelia. Then my life would be so much better. You never know. I would be so much better. Well, you don't know that. Maybe you're an awesome person. I believe so. Let's not talk about dead people, but I think she's awesome. Oh, and what these people outside are trying to do? Why the heck are you staring at the love post, man? Weird, very weird. Why the heck this guy was staring at the love post? I have no idea. Alright, the day is overcast for early autumn and a thick layer of fog creeps along the ground. The grass is wet with morning dew, but the soil beneath it is firm and hard. I suppose that's to be expected. You wouldn't want to build a graveyard on marshland, where people would run the risk of falling through the earth into the graves. I might have an affinity for the dead, but not even I fancy popping in for an unexpected visit with Gerald Fisher, 1843-1912, and Adin, wife of the above. It's cold too. The wind snakes down my spine, and I shiver. It isn't rough wind for. Instead, it's soft, brushing past my cheeks and through my hair in an almost apologetic manner. The leaves on the trees are dark green, some already turning red and yellow, but the sun in the sky is obscured by clouds, so everything looks grey. My feet crunch over the stray leaves with every step I take, but that's the only sound. Well, you can hear. I love there is actually uh, the sound of wind now. Just me. The wind and the leaves. Hello! As I walk through these world rotten paths, I pause, examining each Thompson that catches my interest. Intention. There is something strange and inviting about these odd slabs of stone. Almost as though they are greeting me. And why wouldn't they? I come here often enough, they should know me by now. Any other mother would probably find their only daughter's obsession with graveyards unsettling. 
Fortunately, my mom is just as weird as I am, so she doesn't question it. She must know my love for graveyards is all her fault. I don't my head. I, uh, I nod my head in recognition as I patch each tombstone. Alistair Doncaster, Irene Douglas, Charlotte Draper, Doreen Hughes, Abel Johnson, Genevieve Parsons, Aubrey Wedgwood. I wonder about these people. Reduced to nothing more than names and bones. What lives did they lead? Were they happy, sad, or merely bemused by all the coincidences which led them into being? For Alistair Doncaster, that happened in 1879. For Irene Douglas, it was 1894. What was the world like back then, when these people were alive, and their footsteps, not mine, crunched the leaves and fell firmly against the compacted earth? I don't know, it's hard for me to imagine it. As I walk through the grave graveyard, like Alice sinking into the wonderland, a heavy fall suddenly strikes me. What would it be like if I was already dead? E no, stop, stop please. I close my eyes, a cold wind blows across my cheeks, and I swear I can almost smell it. The earth in my nostrils, the scent of decay. Ah. What was that sound? It was almost like a footstep, but that can't be. I'm the only person here, after all. At least I thought I was. Not anymore. A young girl stands there, her arms held by her sides, her eyes white and blue. Her hair is loose, light brown, her fringe cut just above her eyebrows. She wears a white dress, long and modest, which falls for her ankles. Her dress is comprised of a number of layers and looks like something that belongs to another era, era. another time, in England when Queen Victoria was on the throne and the horrors and courage was still the main way people got about and it was socially acceptable to wear bonnets in public. She looks like nobody I've ever seen before, except characters, characters in period dramas. There's something so unrealistic about her appearance, I can hardly bring myself to believe that she is really real. Maybe that's why I do something I rarely, rarely ever do. My curiosity sticks my throat and I find myself asking her a question. And that question will be asked in the next episode actually, so... This might be an interesting game, to be honest. I think it might have an interesting story about dead people. So, a question in the next episode, and from there we'll continue even more further. And I think I just uh, got another achievement from the game. Alright, free on Steam, of course, so play it by yourself as well. Alright, uh, see you in the next one. Bye!